It is Thanksgiving Eve, and for many Americans, that means a night out on the town. For many police officers, it means time away from their families, extra work, and usually extra drunks. With us tonight to cover policing in America, retired Louisiana homicide detective Rodney Demery, host of the Murder Chose Me podcast, retired NYPD detective Harry Houck, and retired NYPD detective Bill Cannon, host of Police Off the Cuff podcast, all those great podcasts. I want to start tonight in uh, Buena Park, California, where police observed a car intentionally ramming into a school bus. This one's interesting. The driver would then start shooting at the bus. Now it turns out that his estranged wife is actually the driver of the school bus, which may provide a motive in all of this, but there was also one student aboard when this went down. Take a look, uh, and then I do want to warn some viewers that you may find this disturbing. Man, I'm just standing here, like, shaking my head. I can't believe that, that he rammed a school bus. But at the same time, I'm wondering, I want to start with you, Rodney. Um, do you think police should have backed off uh, knowing that there was a kid on the bus? No, no, absolutely not. I think it's a very sticky situation, but the police, well, their job is to actually put themselves in between the danger and the innocent on board. It's a very tricky situation, and they can get real hot, real t intense, real quick, as you see. But the main responsibility is to protect life. And ramming a school bus, I mean, I think that's the first time I've ever heard of that. Okay, let's go to the next one, to Pennsylvania now. This is uh, a very disturbing story. State troopers are called to the scene where an emotionally disturbed 19-year-old is standing on the edge of a bridge with what looks like a real gun in his hand. I'm going to show you two different versions of the event, starting with the version released by the Monroe County District Attorney who found the shooting of Christian Hall to be justified. State police also reported that Hall pointed the gun at police before they fired. Uh, here is the version that the DA released. Here he goes. Oh, there's a gun. No. And the last seven seconds of Christian Hall's life were blurred. You could assume uh, why it was ruled justified, because he was holding a gun and police reported that he pointed that gun at the officers. But now I want to play for you an unedited, unedited version of the event last year. It was released by Hall's parents. Again, I want to warn you, this, uh, this video is, is very disturbing. So, Bill, uh, Bill, I want to go to you first here. Um, obviously, the issue with, with, the, with the second video, it seems like, is, is that the guy's hands are, are in the air. Uh, but also, what do you make of the fact that, that the police didn't release the unedited version? Well, I think that the fact that they used deadly physical force was, uh, was warranted. I mean, he had a gun in his hand. Uh, even though it wasn't pointing in that video directly at them, in a split second, he could turn the gun on them and shoot at them. So as far as that, 
um, <laughs> they were justified. Now, I don't know who, which version of the video was put out by whom, who doctored the video. You don't know all of these things, and I can't really comment on it uh, when I don't know what and for what purpose two different versions of the video were put out. Right, I get it. It's just, you know, transparency these days. I know it's big with policing. People want to see the full video. And then when, some, when one video released by, by the police is, is edited down, that doesn't always sit well with people. You know what I mean? Well, you know, in the Rittenhouse case, the district attorney released a video that, to, uh, that was very clear uh, for the prosecution and gave the defense a blurry video. So you can see there's motivations there. And they may not, might not be so pure. So uh, I can't really comment on, because not knowing exactly what happened, uh, seeing maybe the body-worn video from the police officers, I don't know what uh, version of the other video, what, what it was taken from. Was it from a car video? So we don't know all these things. So it's hard for me to comment on them uh, accurately when I don't know the derivation of the videos. Yeah, I understand. Harry, I want to get you in here. I mean, you could see the person's hands were in the air at one point. Um, it, it was ruled justified, but did you think, I mean, if, if the hands were in the air, I think that sparked some questions for some people. Well, maybe for people that aren't law enforcement officers that, that face the reality of that danger every day, uh, the fact is, as a police officer, you're there and you got a man with a gun in his hand and you're telling him to drop the weapon, drop the weapon, drop the weapon several times, and he doesn't do it. In a split second, he can get a round off and kill a police officer or kill somebody else. So after a couple of times telling him to drop that weapon, that police officer shot him, and it, that was completely justified there. Just, you know, the only people who, you know, look at that and think it's a bad shooting is people who are never involved in such an incident. Yeah, I understand. Um, and, and we also understand that this time of year, it's police who are out having to work on the holidays, uh, you know, long nights while everyone else gets to be home with their family. So, so we appreciate all the hard work that sure. police are doing right now. Bill, uh, Harry and Rodney, thank you so much for being on and happy Thanksgiving.